Our guest in this first segment, Ag- Agnes Ratliff from Project Linus. Agnes, welcome back. How are you Thank feeling you. there? I'm awake. I'm doing good. You're awake is good. <laughs> yes. That's my first qualification for every day, too. Yes. We were just talking about that. The alarm goes off. Above, all right, I'm awake. Above ground, out of jail, and breathing. So. That's a plus, all three. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, tell our viewers and listeners what Project Linus is and how it is named. Okay. Project Linus was uh, named after the peanut character, uh, Linus, who carries a security blanket. And that's exactly what Project Linus does. We make security blankets from children from zero to 18. <coughs> bless you, um, that uh, are in need of comfort, whether it's a security from a family situation, an illness, a hospital, a living situation, whatever the case may be. They are locally made here in uh, the Eastern Panhandle, Berkeley, Jefferson, and Morgan County, and we give them out here in the Eastern Panhandle as well. Um, We work with uh, Bethany House, uh, Children's Home Society, and Eastern... um, Empowerment Center, and as well as the hospital, uh, fire departments, um, local police departments, and individuals that uh, I see that have a need of a loss of a child or a, a grandparent, the, the loss of a grandparent that was taking care of a family of children, um, everywhere we can. And what do you have coming up? We have the National Make a Blanket Day. Um, this was set up several years ago when one of the schools had a um, a shooting at the school, the Columbine shooting, and they needed several hundred blankets at one time. So National said, let's all get together this Saturday, the third Saturday in February, and make blankets. And this has now become a yearly thing, and nationwide we get about 700 or 7, 70,000 blankets um, made or donated on that day. And that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, we will be at the Berkeley 2000 Recreation Center mm-hmm. um, at the end of the evident. building in the conference room where people can come and visit and see the blankets that we make. They can donate blankets. They can find out how they can help out, whether it's um, donating fabric, a gift card for fabric, um, batting, whatever the case may be, yarn, or they can use their talents and help make these or use their talents and help me distribute these blankets. How many are you expecting? I have no idea. We have been quiet for about two months, so I'm expecting a pretty good turnout. I've been out there pushing the whole idea, um, you know, anywhere from the first, last year was the first year that we did this, and we received 40 blankets. So I expect to receive 200 blankets at least. Wow. Yeah. Where will you store all these blankets? Um, hopefully that day we can um, so- tag them. We've tagged them with a Project Linus tag and um, sort them by sizes and make sure that they are safe for the children. And um, they will be dist- dist- um, stored in the back of my pickup truck, my garage, <laughs> my basement, my living room, wherever I need until I can get them distributed. So hopefully next week a lot of them will be going out to be distributed. Because a blanket's a big thing. Oh, yeah. Take so some storage. Are you looking for blankets f- from somebody's linen closet that they're trying to get rid of? Or are nope. you looking mostly These, from, from uh, scratch, manufactured baby. from scratch? No, not even manufactured. These are homemade blankets. Are there guidelines for people who yes, want to make Yes, there are. These? There are guidelines for this, and it's on our national website, which is www.projectlinus.org. It'll give you the blanket sizes. Or you can um, email me at agnesratliff57 at gmail.com, and I can send you the blanket size, our calendar, because we do do a monthly blanket day where we get together. Plus, we have been very lucky and fortunate through the Berkeley County Parks and Recreation to use their facilities on two Mondays a month. Uh, where we get together and create blankets. And, but a lot of people do it at, at their churches or their youth groups or individuals at their homes or wherever. But they're all homemade, new homemade blankets. And on the, on the other side of this, where the children are going to receive mm-hmm. these, do they receive the blanket that comes to them or do they choose which blanket they it's would prefer to, to have? It's up to the facility. And a lot of times they will have a, a certain amount on hand and receive, um, you know, get to pick what they want. Um, we have like children's themes to, to you know, horses and bears and, you know, uh, fish and all kinds of things. So they get to choose a lot of times. And they have different kinds. We have quilts. We have the Afghans, and we have the fleece ties. Mr. Harvey. This, this is all fascinating, and, and really appreciate what you're doing. And I've, 
you know, I think back to some of my prized possessions that I have at, at my house, and, and some of those are the handmade quilts that my grandmother mm-hmm. made me and how special it is to receive something that's handmade. So mm-hmm. I, I want to ask you, why wouldn't it be easier to just go buy these at Walmart? Sure, it would be easier to go buy it, but it's not the same. Like you say, you have your, your grandmother's blanket. I have great-grandmother's grandmother's mothers. I am very lucky because I come from a quilting family. And it's something that you get to carry the rest of your life. The Walmart blankets, yeah, you can buy them, but it's not the same. It's the heart of, of somebody putting it together for you, making, knowing that somebody took the time to do that. And are, are the children... Um, that receive these blankets, are they told the origins of the blankets that they're handmade or there's a little card or there's something? There's a little from... card on the blankets that has a poem that this blanket was made for you, thought up before for you and what it means and for you to, you know, keep and secure. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. It's... Agnes Ratliff is our guest from Project Linus, a chapter in this area which you started, correct? Yes, I started it a little bit over a year ago. We've been um, in October of 2021 and we started really collecting blankets last year in February of 2022. And we are a nonprofit, 5013C, um, not a charity, so it's tax deductible. Uh, if anybody wants to donate, they can donate locally or online at the national website. We have a project going on right now that one of our um, blanketeers made, they had a contest where they would send out a pattern, you'd buy the pattern. And you'd make these blocks, and it, and it actually ends tomorrow night. That um, <clears throat> the, the, it's a national um, fundraiser, and it helps support that national takes care of my, uh, you know, registering for Friva One Three C. They take care of the insurance, auditing, and all that. So it makes it my life much easier. And um, but Diane um, Tempata has entered her quilt. She's uh, her number on the national website is. Excuse me, <clears throat> I'm not awake. It is 27, <laughs> and she is uh, one of the top fundraisers right now. She has been doing this for four or five years for for the national, and she's won a prize every year. I'm so proud of her. Um, she came on board with me um, years ago to do this, and she is just she's thriving. She does beautiful quilt work. If anybody needs a quilting done. Um, they can reach out to me, and I can get her the information. How do they reach you, Agnes? They can reach me at Agnes Ratliff 57 at Project Linus. Or no, Agnes57 at gmail.com. Gmail.com. Yeah. Agnes57 at gmail.com. That's it. All right. Uh, what? How did you even hear about Project Linus to even know to start something like this here? Oh, uh, years ago, way back, I was in 4-H, and my a group of 4-Hers that I belong to in Pennsylvania – um, would arrange for a bus trip to another state. And there would be about 35 of us, guys and girls, traveling across the uh, country on trucks, buses. And uh, with the, one of my friends that was with me, she, we, um, she started a project Linus in Kentucky at the time where she lived. We had a, a reunion, and she was telling me about this. And she said, Agnes, you need to get into this. Well, there was no chapter here locally, but she told me about the challenge quilt and so I did that for a few years and then Frederick um, County Maryland started a chapter and I drove over the mountain and donated my blankets over there and I always thought I would like to bring them back here to Berkeley County because we need there is such a need for the children um, in the area not only for the children but for the creators to have some outlet where they can create these because a lot of these women and men have been creating blankets for years. Their kids and grandkids and great-grandkids are like, we have enough, but we still have that creativity in us. So this helps them create as well. So I retired in April of 2021, yeah. And and by October, I said I need to get have something to do. And so I, my dream was to start a chapter, and I did it, and I love it. Is there a social element of this? By the way, I love the the word blanketeer. That's, yes. That, that, so, <laughs> is there a social element of this where your your staff or your cadre of blanketeers get together in the same room and and? Oh and, yeah, we we you know text each other all the time, sending pictures. Wouldn't this be a great blanket or whatever? You know, um, Facebook and texting and messaging is great. But we on our blanket days we get together, and then the creative days that are on the Mondays. 
is is basically um, creating, taking whatever we do, whether it's one it's a lady sitting there with her knitting needles or crochet hooks, and and socializing and talking and laughing and having a good time. You know. Do you welcome walk-ins? I do. And where would they walk into? They would walk into the Berkeley Two Thousand Recreation Center on Woodbury Avenue, and it's down towards the end, past the main part of the basketball area. It's in the conference room. And um, that's every Monday. No, it's oh. no, it's two Mondays a month and it's on my calendar and I can get it out. And hopefully I have a meeting this afternoon with a young lady that's going to help me get a website set up. So we'll have it out there Very on nice. the World Wide Web. If I am a great blanketeer, yes. but I have no money and can't afford to buy the materials, mm -hmm. but I've got plenty of time to do the labor and skill. Mm -hmm. Is there someone that can help me? Oh, meet one yes, we have problem we solved. Have we have donations that, um, you know, somebody's just not doing the, the craft anymore or they're downsizing or they're a relative passed away or in a nursing home and we're given those, those fabrics and, and yarn. Uh, we have a stash and they're more than welcome to go through that and, and pick out. We have kits made up um, of, of um, donations and so forth that, that they can make into blankets. I was very lucky. Um, I, I purchased some things. We do have some fundraisers that were able to purchase the fleece uh, that goes on the fleece blanket and the batting. And uh, there was a quilt shop that I shop at in Pennsylvania, and they're moving. And so they had their um, panels, which is a, a picture on fabric. And then you can put different fabrics behind it. And they had panels on sale. So I made a trip up there and got a big bag full of panels. And they can use that and then go in our stash and, and see what they have, you know, and, and everything. I've seen the movie A Christmas Story probably 50 times, maybe more. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that I appreciate about that movie is how everything is perfect for the time period. Mm -hmm. They made that movie about the 1940s. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I checked out one of the more recent times I saw the movie was the blankets mm -hmm. on the boys' beds. Mm -hmm. Because when I was a kid in the late 60s and 70s, I had a similar style blanket. Okay. And I'm wondering if you look at blankets over the years, can you kind of identify the time period when it was made just I by looking at it? I some of them by the, by the fabric or the design. Um, a lot of the designs have been moder modern modernized mm -hmm. and everything. I mean, I was up at Jean Benet Tavern. Do you know where that's at in Bedford? Mm -mm. Oh, if you guys ever get to Bedford, just on the West End, it's a, it was Fort Jean Benet, and it's a tavern restaurant. And they have a couple old blankets sitting, hanging on the wall and everything. And, and they have a very um, small menu, but great menu. Fresh meats and fresh vegetables and, and everything. And as a matter of fact, that's where I spent my Valentine's Day. Is it off the turnpike or 40 or what? Off of 30. 30. Yes. I got uh, had a car break down years ago going through Bedford in the winter in a snowstorm mm. and ended up getting towed to Big Jim's truck stop yes. and Big Jim's hotel right there, yes. <laughs> motel, and yes. spent a very snowy winter night yes. there once. But if you're going up to the memorial, the, yeah. okay, it would be on your way up from Bedford. It's it's a it's a, a fort. They've redone it. There's ghosts in there. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, my glass. I put my glass down, and my husband's like, your glass is moving. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I put my glass down again, and I just slid a little bit. That's right on. <laughs> <laughs> it's an odorless, colorless gas. Uh, well, then I've been introduced to radon, but that's okay. I like, you know, this one was a friendly radon. Just so. mention my name, and it'll go away. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, can I? So, if, if someone who is has a loved one that passes on, or if they somehow acquire some sewing machines that they want to get rid of, or, or old handmade quilts, will you take those in and re and repurpose and reuse them? Not the old handmade quilts. There are there are museums around that can do that. They don't have to be old or valuable. Or, no, they or just museum to be hand, they just to be have to be like handmade and kind of new. We don't want the used one that all the frayed edges and things you, like that. You can't like. I don't have pull parts off of it, so <laughs> to speak. I can't reconstruct them. I have enough of those in my family that I need to reconstruct. Uh, you know, those are hard. They're difficult. It's easier to take and. A fabric, cut it, sew it back together, and you know, then mm -hmm. it is. I'll be honest with you. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. But as far as sew machine, um, as long as they're working sew machines, yes, uh, we were were very lucky that what the Quilt Guild in Berkeley Springs donated two 
sew machines to us so that if I have a youth that wants to learn how to sew, I can, you know, use those on the Saturdays and, and or an adult that, you know, they have, they'd love to sew, but they don't have a machine. They can come there and, and sew and or learn how to sew. And, and that's one of my goals in the future is to hold some small classes uh, to teach sewing. Right. I, I don't think that it would be an obvious hobby that the younger generation would gravitate towards without unless they're introduced and they realize hey this is really unless the family relaxing. introduced but i'll tell you what um i was contacted by a teacher at north middle school just down the road here mm -hmm. and she started a sewing club in like last fall and she has about 20 kids in there that are want to learn how to sew and they're it's hard at the end of the day to keep their attention but they want to learn how to sew and they you know and i'm helping her out with that her and a, another lady uh are helping her with that because 30 kids with one teacher just i can't imagine how she does it they used to teach that in home ec classes they don't they have home ec classes yeah. anymore they kind I, of, I remember making yeah. a, a duffel bag yeah. i think mm -hmm. what, what i chose to make I, I, so we had to make an apron and a hat or whatever there was something like that i, I remember seventh and eighth grade mm -hmm. the home ec rotation for nine weeks learning how to sew yeah and and now i can Sew my buttons back on That's when it. they fall off. But you know, <laughs> most most people can't even do that. It's like a oh, button falls off and you know it goes to to a shelter, Goodwill, or the trash, you know, or yard sale. But um, those are basic skills that mm -hmm. is really needed. And so, I, Agnes, has has sewing always been a part of your life? Have you? Oh did yes. Did you make your own clothes and doing? Oh yeah. Over the I, years, part time surgery. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've done that too. <laughs> Um, yes, I was very fortunate. Um, my grandmother hand sewed. She was blind and she hand sewed and made quilts. Oh my goodness. And she came from eight sisters and they all sewed. And my mother sewed. I remember being, sitting, the, the, the truth the story, but sitting on my mother's lap and she would hit the treadle machine and I would be pushing the fabric through. Yeah. So, and then I was in 4-H and I competed in 4-H in, in, in sewing competitions and so forth. And then I got away from it. Um, when you become an adult, you know, you go, out there, I don't need this anymore. But when I was in school, I made all my own clothes. When I, I remember one year, um, I said to my dad, I said, I, wanna, I want new clothes for school this year. And he said, okay. We went to, and, um, we went to the local um, sewing you know, shop, and, and he uh, helped me buy a, a sewing machine with my winnings from the fair. And, and back in those days, you could get fabric from feed stores. Remember the feed sacks? And so you would go Burlap? in. Burlap? No, uh-uh. Cotton fabric. Oh, okay. Cotton fabric. And you could go in, and you know, and he would, we had a farm, and he would go in and pick out the feed, and he'd say, okay, what, what, you know, what fabric do you want this? They make feed sacks out of them. What fabric do you want? And they'd put the feed, the grains or whatever in the feed sack, and then when we emptied it out at home, then that's where our clothes came from. Agnes Ratliff is our guest. Project Linus is the cause. And uh, again, at the Berkeley Rec Center this Saturday, I guess yes. I think you said it was. We right? are having a Make a Blanket Day and Blanket Day um, at the Berkeley Rec Center from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Everybody is welcome. The doors will be open, and it is in the conference room. Um, I'm not sure if the gym is busy. I don't think it's occupied. So if they want to bring the kids and let them run in the gym and, uh, and get a little exercise and burn off some of that energy while they come see what we do and maybe help out. Even so, a little bag to put the kids in to keep them in, you know, right? The burlap sack. <laughs> uh, you know what? We're here to help kids. Oh, okay. not, not right. you know, uh, that would traumatize them a little bit, maybe. The views of John Gilstrap are not in this radio station or the Hornby I family. need to f read his books to see what his views really are. <laughs> Agnes, do you have kids who are currently waiting on blankets? Yes, we do. We are, Yes, I called. Uh, the hospital is out of blankets right now. And Eastern Panhandle Empowerment Center said, whatever you can send us, we have use for. Mostly we need twin size. Twin size. Twin size or teen size blankets because that's the biggest need for it. Um, a lot of groups like to make the little baby ones because they're so cute mm -hmm. and so soft and cuddly. But there's a lot of teens that are in the system that really need some comfort, some security, somebody to say, I love you. And that's exactly what we're here for. Is there a place somebody can go on their own to learn how to make a blanket so that they can sew a blanket and get it to you by this Saturday? To get it to me by this Saturday and make it in two days? Mm -hmm. That would be really hard. But they can go online and just uh, they're at the national website there's patterns mm -hmm. that they can download. The National Linus Project yes. website? Mm -hmm. 
you know, or you can just go to YouTube, my favorite place to go to, the uh, How to Do Everything. I've mm -hmm. learned a lot on that. And you can see how to, um, like on the fleece blankets, how to make them, how to do a different edging on them. Um, Pinterest has a lot of patterns. I, you know, my husband says I spend too much time on the internet. <laughs> Agnes, how do people get in touch with you to find out how they can become a part of Project Linus? They can reach me at agnesratliff57 at gmail.com. Good to see you again. It is wonderful to see you. Happy Thank you for having me as always. Happy blanketing.